Today I want to show you how to use a fourth based programming language called Swift Fourth. You can pick up a trial or free version at fourth.com. There's not a lot of information on the fourth programming language on YouTube. And so I thought I would create a few tutorials on how to get up and running. So after you download a copy of Swift Fourth, you'll be greeted to a screen like this and you'll probably, you know, not know your way around or what to do. So what I'm going to say is that uh, fourth is a stat stack based programming language. And what that means is you can type numbers and you can basically have what this is called as a data stack and you can manipulate the stack by using certain words or you can think of them as functions you have things like dupe which will duplicate the top of the stack and you can see it just duplicated it drop will basically drop the top item off the data stack you can swap which will swap the two items on the data stack and you can rotate items on the data stack. So we can do all sorts of manipulations and it goes way, way deeper than this. Believe me, there's a ton of words and I'll just show you real quick. You can just type in words and it will show you, you know, basically what you have at your disposal and you can extend this you can create your own functions and your own words which is what a, a lot of fourth programmers do and there's not a lot of you know tutorials on how to use all these words so i thought i would you know create these videos so before i started this video i created a word called uh, tutorial and i kind of created a few versions of it so that's why you see it more than once, but and basically it's just a little program that you know displays this text. And all I did was uh, this word right here just wipes the screen. So so basically this is the source code of the word tutorial. What it's doing, we'll just go over it real quick, just a little sidebar. Uh, wipe the screen, CR means just enter. And this right here is how we kind of display a piece of text. And if you start it with a dot quote, you have to end it with a quotation mark. So we're basically, you know, hitting enter and displaying this piece of text and that's all there is to it. So if we run this word tutorial, it does exactly that. So it'll wipe the screen and show this text right here. So since we're kind of, you know, doing that, that's kind of how you create new functions. Anytime you want to create a new function, you have to do it with a colon and you can name it anything. And you can have it do something. So we just learned the word duplicate. So we're gonna have our function, which is called something. We're gonna have it duplicate one, two, three. And to end a function, you just do a semicolon. Hit enter. Now we can run this function something and sure enough, it'll put one, two, three on the data stack and it will duplicate it, which is what we see down here. Now the data stack is um, a little bit different than, uh, you, for example, if you're just adding and subtracting on a data stack, you would think, oh, I can just do one plus two. 
but that's not exactly going to turn out how you think. So for example, if I just hit enter, what we get is four and two. So uh, fourth uses reverse Polish notation, which means if you want to do one plus two, you have to write it like that, one, two plus, and we should get three on the top, just like that. If we want to do multiplication, it's the same thing. And that's pretty much uh, reverse Polish notation. You kind of have to rewire your brain for it, but I've been doing fourth for so long, it's just kind of second nature. So it's just one of those things that you have to get used to. If you kind of want to clear the data stack, you can just put in you know gibberish and it'll it'll clear whatever's on the data stack. So let's do something useful. As I said before, we didn't cover these words, um, so we're going to cover them. Pad is basically a scratch pad of memory, and we can manipulate this piece of memory by using certain words such as dump and erase. So I'm going to show you real quick what that means. We can just type in pad. And what it's going to do is it's going to output an address. And let's say we want to examine this address. We want to examine uh, 50 bytes of this address. So we tell it 50 and we just type in dump, which will dump the contents. And we can see that in our address, which is called pad, we have, you know, some gibberish, some just junk data. So we can manipulate this piece of data with, you know, certain words as erase, which will do exactly what it says. It will erase contents of memory. And to use this word, we just type in pad 50 erase we do that we can do pad 50 dump you can see that we've you know cleared that space of memory and with this piece of memory we can you know process text we can do all sorts of things so let's do that real quick we're going to cover a new word, which is called accept. And if you type it like this, it's basically saying, okay, we're gonna use 20 bytes and we're gonna take input from the keyboard. We can type in A, B, C, D, one, two, three. You can hit enter. And even though we didn't use 20 bytes, it, we used seven. So we can examine this. We can see that in our piece of memory, we have, you know, A, B, C, D, one, two, three. But we also have this other stuff here, which is that extra, um, that extra 20 bytes or whatever that we allocated. So if we were to count this out, this would be, you know, 20 bytes allocated. And then we have our uh, stuff that we cleared out earlier. So let's say we want to display that ABCD onto the console. What we do is we do a thing called pad Z count. And that's going to tell us that um, what Z count does is it will count all the way up until we get a zero. So that's what it did. And to display that to the console, we just type in type. 
So as you see, we have A, B, C, D, one, two, three, but we also have this extra um, piece of junk or these extra bytes right here. So we can actually, um, we can cut that off. We can do pad Z count trailing. And trailing's another word. Trailing is going to accept an address and it's going to accept a length. So, so right here we have pad Z count. It's going to count up until we get the first zero, which is this. And then our word trailing is going to basically cut off this uh, extra junk, which are, you know, just these, I think it's like a space. Yeah. Trailing type. So there you go. So we have, you know, quite a, quite a few words for manipulating a piece of, you know, data and if you want to see these words, you can always type it in or you can do locate and it will tell you what it expects. So the, the word trailing expects an address, which is what we gave it pad and it's expecting, you know, a, a number. So if we, provide it these two things, it's going to spit out these two things. So we can't just, you know, type trailing. It's probably going to give us an error. And, and we didn't get anything. So let me run this again. So if we run it, as it says, we get basically what it, what it's going to say. So address, number of bytes, it's going to spit out an address and a number of bytes. Same thing with uh, Z count. We can use a word called locate. And that's going to tell you what it, what the function does and how it works. So Z count is going to expect an address and it's going to give you an address and a number of bytes. So like we said, pad Z count and it does exactly what it says. So it gives you an address and 20, which if we go up here, like I said, it's going to go up to here and count until that first zero. And with all these words, you can pretty much uh, look it up how they work. And you can kind of get an idea of how to play, play around with them. So that's um, a real quick primer on how to use Swiftforth. And I'm going to cover more stuff because like, if we just type in words, you know, there's, there's just a ton of stuff to go over. So I hope uh, you can upvote this video, like it and subscribe and tell me if you want to see more content.